Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So we are on this section right here. So we've already done uh, editors and uh, let's do comments, then we can go to basic elements. So in our last uh, video, we looked at how to create this header and a paragraph, right? Now let's scroll down, let's move down a little bit here. And I want us to look at how to create comments. Now I can type something like this is a comment like so and let's go back to our page and see how that displays and you can see it down here this is a comment now a comment is something that the user should not see or the one viewing the website should not see but uh, it's just meant to tell you the coder what this section does so for example I can want to say something like uh, this is a paragraph this is a paragraph right here, right? But I don't want this text to be seen by others that are just browsing the website. So what I'll do is I'll put an angle bracket exclamation point, two hyphens like this. And this effectively makes the text after this part a comment. This means that this whole text will not be visible. So we'll just see the title there and that will be it. So let's just check that out. And as you can see, that's what's happening. If I view the page source, you see that it shows uh, this in red, signifying that uh, this is commented out or something. Now, you may not want to comment everything after this part. You may just want to comment up to somewhere. Then to open up things again, you put two of those again and the closing angle bracket. Okay, so once you do that, only that line uh, is commented out. So only this is grayed out. So you can do the same thing for this part right here. Let's put that there and do that. And that becomes a comment as well. So it would disappear like that. All right. So that just kind of helps you uh, when you're once you design your website and then later you want to know what this part is for, uh, you can leave some snippet of comments, some comment snippets there to remind you what you were trying to do on that section. Okay, so now that we have comments out of the way, let's look at some basic um, elements we can create. Now this, this H1 tag here, these are called tags by the way, like this, so tags. So this tag right here is an element, it's an item, this one right here. So this constitutes the header because it opens here and closes there. Now, you cannot leave a space between these, otherwise it won't recognize this as a tag. But you can leave as much space as you want here and it won't affect anything. Okay. Same applies to this, you can leave space there, but you can't leave space here. Now, these are not case sensitive, so this will work just as fine, capital H, uh, small letter H, but this is bad practice. So it's always better to use the small letter versions. So let's just try that out. And as you can see, nothing has changed. So let's undo that. It's always better to use the small letters. So let's list um, a few of the uh, elements or the tags that are common. So the very most common one is div that stands for division. There's another one called span. Uh, there's another one called, um, as you have seen before, b. This b will create bold, bold text. And uh, Span and div are just a uh, just the way this is here, just to hold some information, uh, but they come with properties of their own that make them different. For example, span will just go up to where the text ends, but div will always make sure it goes from left to right. It's always 100% in width. So what I mean by that is if, for example, inside here, this is a header, um, if I just do this, this is a header text, something like that. I can put a div inside here. Now, keep in mind that you can nest these things. So 
this text is within this h1 container however i can put another container in here it could be an h1 or it could be something else so just like uh, i close this here so this is an h1 within another h1 so you might try to display this content like this in order to be able to know what's going on so i'm hitting the tab key here to move things away from the edge so that way i can see that the h1 is holding this content here and then the inside the h1 is another h1 now this will have no significant meaning because everything is still h1 but if we put a div on this one like so well let's start with a span okay you won't notice any difference whatsoever so let's refresh and you see this is header text however header is inside another tag let's try the i italic like this that way we can see a visible difference so as you can see this is header text so within so we can nest these one inside another even to a thousand it doesn't really matter but if i change this i to div or let's try span first like we had done you won't see a difference at all but if i change the span to div then you will see a difference because this is what happens so what's really happening is that the div extends from the left to the entire 100 percent right here this is why it has forced the other text on the next line and also it has been forced to the next line because it needs to fill up the whole space now in order just so we can see it i will add something that you won't be familiar with you might not be familiar with so this one is just background color and i'm going to call it gray so don't mind what i'm doing there for now just i just want you to see the div itself so as you can see this is the actual div it goes all the way to the end there so if i do change this to span again you will notice the difference that uh, span just goes in line so it's still here but it's in line with the whole text it doesn't become a block that moves from left to right so this is the difference between these two containers a span and a div but b does bold and then we have i for italic yes so all these are uh, nice um tags that you can use now keep in mind you can use any of these tags and still change these properties for example this uh div property can be changed and we're going to see how we can change that instead of it going all the way to the end like this we can just change its display to be uh in line uh block like so so don't mind this again i'm just trying to give you a sense of what's going on so once i do that you see the same div that was going all the way here now just goes up to there so don't get too hung up on what uh version to use because you can always edit uh whatever tag you have even this bold tag you can remove its boldness and add italic there instead to it so the only reason we have different ones like this is because they come with default uh, settings which you may want to use that way you remove the hassle of having to do it here so for example here instead of me putting this display inline block it would be better if i use a span instead because it comes with this as a basic uh, base property okay so hopefully that makes some sense so let me remove this so another thing you will notice is that um, uh, this text right here is is on separate lines right but if we go back to this and refresh you see that here it's on the same line so this means html ignores white space so i can also put more space like this and all that will still be ignored as you can see here it's still just one line if i want to add a line i have to use a tag called a break tag so this break tag will break a line to the next one so since i've already i've just added one break tag it's just going to move one step down even though i have all that space there 
So as you can see, it has moved to the next line like so. So if I duplicate this a couple of times, it will move even further because for each break that creates a new line. Now, there are times when you may need a line instead of just moving to the next uh, to the next line with a break tag like this. So let me come back here and let's remove that. You may want to have a line show up here once you do that. So you can change that to an HR tag like this. This is a horizontal brew. And if I come back here and refresh, not only do I move to the next line, but I have a line across like this. So you may find this useful, especially if after the title like this, I can put things, I can move it to here. Okay, so this is the advantage of using proper text editors. You can simply drag and drop text around like this, which you can't do in things like Notepad, uh, basic Notepad for that is. So if I refresh now, this is what I get. This is a header, a line, and uh, some text here as predicted. Okay, so this is all nice and good. So the question is, how do I know what tag to use where? Now, you can always Google uh, what tag to use. Google is your friend. So you can just go and say all HTML tags. You just type that in the Google search and it's going to show you all the HTML tags that have ever existed and you can go through each one and see what each one can actually do. Okay, so a few more that I want us to see. These are just uh, the basic ones. Uh, let's say you want to add an image so those um, is a tag that you'd, uh, this is the image tag, it's the H. And by the way, with, um, with Sublime Text, once I put that angle bracket there, you see that it gives me a suggestion of all the available uh, tags here. And also keep in mind that you can make your own tags. You don't have to rely on these that exist. You can do this and then just close that same one like that doesn't really need to mean anything because you can still add styles and properties to this same tag right here. It's only that these ones come pre-programmed with specific behaviors once you use them, these ones that are well known. So if I do that, I get all these suggestions right here. There's audio, there's article, there's B. All these are possible block quote. For example, if we try block quote, here let me do um, select that uh-huh move uh, my cursor to the right and then type block quote like this so there might be a slight difference you notice here if i refresh you see how that looks like it moves center like this because usually this is used to put a quote by somebody and uh, at the end here, I may have missed a bracket. Oops, what happened? Oh, it's this one right there. Sorry about that. So if I refresh, you see the block quote in the middle here. So each one of these comes with its own properties, but not to worry because you can type your own here and just add styles to change its behavior. So let's try and add an image this time. So the one for image is IMG, like, see, like this. And then this introduces something important here. This one is an attribute, right? So this is an attribute. And of course, we're going to talk about attributes a lot more in the next video. But for now, this just gives more information about the, the tag. Now, if you notice this HR tag, uh, this, for example, this block quote has an opening and closing tag. That's because it's got content in between. Just like this one here, it has opening and closing. That's because it has the capacity to hold something inside it. But the image does not have that capacity because there's no need to actually add text to an image. We want to load an image. All we need to know is the source of the image. Where do we find that image? This is where this attribute here shows up. But we don't need to put any content inside this. This is why it's open and it's just one side of the tag just like this one hr it doesn't have an opening and closing because it just does one simple thing to move us to the next line and add a line so it doesn't need a closing tag like this 
So as you can see, even when I do that, it doesn't give me the suggestion to do that because it's just ridiculous. So it's the same thing with the image tag. So now I just need to give it a source and tell it where to find the image because like this, if let's say I just type some gibberish, it won't find the image and it will end up just showing this, which shows you that image was not found. It's a broken image link. Now, in order for us to show images, um, we are better off, uh, let me go back to web page here and go back to my desktop. I have a folder with images in here. So just get one random image. I will get maybe, um, not sure here at all. Yeah, very hard to choose. Uh, why am I even choosing here? This is, this is insane. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just get this one right here, burger, just to make us hungry and go back to my folder here and inside, just to make sure that within the index.html, that's where you are putting your image. So I'm going to paste here and that's happening right there. So I will put simple names, avoid spaces in file names. If you, you want to put two words, put either a hyphen or an underscore, that's always better. So this one will be called image.jpg. Now the file extension is important. You have to know whether this is a .jpg or .png or a BM. It's not advisable to use bitmaps, um, the BMP file format because it's so huge. The internet requires, since it's always over the network, it requires very small files. The smaller, the better, the faster the load times. So it's JPEG is a very good file format for the internet. Like this file is 12 kilobytes, which is nice. So this is an image file and it's called image.jpg. So I have to put the name here plus the file extension like this, okay? And once I do that, I will refresh. And as you can see, there is an image here, which is awesome. That's how you load an image. Now, there are plenty of things you can load apart from images. Let me put a break tag to go to the next line because even though I do this, uh, press enter down here, it won't happen on the other side until I put a break tag. So here I can put something like um, uh, an A tag. So an A tag is just like close to an image tag, but this one is a link. So here it has opening and closing because you can add some text there like so you can say click me so once you click then you can give it where you want it to go so we'd need a second page here which we might call uh, second dash page dot html so if we created another page uh, once we click on this thing it would take us to that page but because that page does not exist we'll get an error instead but there's a click me right there if i click you see it says file not found, which is okay because we didn't create that file, but we saw it navigate to it. Let's go back here and there we go. So you're beginning to see the design pattern of websites here. So we have a title, we have a paragraph of text, we have an image and we have a link. So believe it or not, these are the basic components that make almost every single website. So just with these, you can make quite a bit of uh, you can design quite a nice website here. All right, so with this in mind, let's look at attributes in greater detail in the next video, which are these things right here. I'll see you then.